Hey guys, Pastor Jurgen here. I'm so glad you're tuning into one of our powerful messages that is guaranteed to absolutely elevate your life to another level. At Awaken, we only want to preach fresh, real, powerful to help you grow stronger in your walk with God, develop your faith so you can take more territory. I'm praying that God blesses you and enriches your soul as you listen to this amazing word from God. God bless you. I feel like God has given me a word tonight and I'm just so excited to be able to share it with you. I pray and as I was praying for you, I was praying for hope, I was praying for power um, as, as we learn and get ministered to tonight. So I'm gonna get right into it. The Bible says in Psalm 77, 14, you are the awesome God who works powerful wonders. Somebody say powerful wonders. You have demonstrated your power among the people. Job 37.5 says, God thunders with his voice wondrously, doing great things which we cannot comprehend. Ever had something happen that's such a wonder, you can't even wrap your head around it. That is our God. Isaiah 25, 1, oh Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you, I will praise you, and I will give thanks to your name. For you have done miraculous things, plans formed long, long ago, fulfilled with perfect faithfulness. The title of my message tonight is Wonder Working God. I was reflecting on the wonder that is God. I recently went to Ecuador, which is where I grew up my teenage years. If you're trying to figure out my accent, don't try. I am originally from New York. I grew up in South America, hablando español. Um, ¿Tenemos algunos que hablan español aquí? Ah, we do. I know, I'm like getting into it because I just got back from Ecuador. They had me preach in Spanish. Estaba predicando en español. It was a big deal, I know. Getting ready for our campus in Baja, it's so good. And, uh, and it was so fun, this was an impromptu trip and I got to go back to Ecuador where my family lives. My parents are missionaries there, that's where I grew up. And uh, my family has kind of been, we've been in multiple countries throughout most of my life and so us all getting together is like a phenomena. But this last Thanksgiving, all of us got together in Ecuador and um, it was such a beautiful time. We realized that it had been like 25 years since our whole family had spent a Thanksgiving together. Actually, could you put up the picture of, of my family? This is my my family, yep, there we are. Oh, you guys are sweet. I'm gonna talk a lot about them tonight. Um, we're just missing two nephews, Jeremy and Brandon, and a grandbaby in that photo, but that is most all of us in, in the family. And when I was there, it was so fun because we went to church on Sunday, and it was like we filled two rows. And we're all sitting, we're just sitting there together, we're like, how did this happen? It was even just a wonder realizing our entire family is in the house of God. We all love God and each other. That, my friends, is a miracle. <laughs> How does that happen? How does it happen that a whole family could love God, could love each other? And you might be looking at the photo and you're like, great, Stacy, picture perfect, awesome for you. <laughs> But while I was in Ecuador, I was also reflecting on each of our individual stories and everything that we have gone through. I was thinking about each of our histories individually and all the things that, that, that we've gone through individually and as a family. And I was looking out in, in, in Ecuador and the people that they're ministering to there and I was just, I was just having that, those moments. You know when you go on vacation, you just begin to reflect. And I'm just reflecting and I'm looking out and I'm like, wow. And I'm seeing the church that they're ministering in and, and, and all the programs and all the things. And, and it was extraordinary. And, but then I'm looking at like extreme need and despair and people in rough places. You know, Ecuador is a third world nation. It doesn't have first world problems. It has third world problems. <laughs> and I was like, oh, there's just so much need. And I'm looking around. But then at the same time, I'm thinking, but there's so much hope. And I began to see all the, the miracles happening in the people and happening in my family. And I just thought, there is something about the wonder working power of God. It is not like human power. It, it is such a different thing. And, and so as I began to, to think about it, 
One of the reasons I'm even on this stage today and why my family are in ministry is because of the things that we have gone through and overcome. It's the comeback story. Could you put up the next picture? Just take a look at this one, and you can see through the eyes of our history. Just a few of the things. These are just a few things that my family has, has been through and individually. And I put that picture up, uh, not because, you know, I feel like just doing a tell-all <laughs> in the family. And I did ask them. I shared with them and said, I'm going to share a little bit about our family and the, some of the things that we've gone through. You know, it was really cool. All of them were like, absolutely, tell the story. And, and why did they, were they okay with us telling the story? Because there's been some gained ground in our life. Because the way we start is not the way that we finish. The way a story begins is not the way that the story has to end. And most of us, if we're honest, we're right in the middle. We're in the middle of a breakthrough. We're in the middle of a trauma. We're in the middle of a pain. And let me tell you tonight, there is hope for your family. I believe it with every fiber of my being because I've been through all these stories. I was reflecting and I was looking and I was thinking about my parents. My parents were first, they were the first Christians in our family. My dad did not grow up in a Christian home. That's my dad right there, the one right under the word jail. Let me tell you about that. Um, <laughs> he's 72. Y'all, he looks young, doesn't he? 72 years old. He's going to love hearing that on the podcast. Um, but he really does look young. And, and my mother, she's 68 years old. And um, I was thinking about their lives. And my dad, you know, he didn't grow up in a Christian home. And, and so he looked at his parents' life, and he's like, boring. Like, I'm not going to live my whole life bored. So he decided to try things. And one of the things he got involved in was drugs. And see, the thing about my family is, if we're going to do something, we're going to do it well. So... My dad didn't just do drugs, he became a drug dealer. And he was a really good salesman. And so he introduced drugs into the city of New York that we were living in, and he um, sold all through his teenage years. Uh, he sold to his classmates, his teachers, uh, to federal agents. Capaldi's know how to sell, y'all, okay? And uh, that, you know, was kind of working out for him until he hit his 18th birthday and he sold to the, the wrong federal agent and it was a sting operation. And he found himself in a really precarious place. Later on in my dad's life, he lost his brother um, out of college. Uh, they both had started businesses and started working and it was really sad. It was a very um, mindless crime. There was no reason for it. His brother came out of work one night, and this is the brother that they did life together. They were like the two heroes of their town. They were the football stars, and they were, you know, the two lifeguards on the lake, and everyone knew the Capaldi brothers, and um, one night after they finished working, he uh, went to his car, and somebody was stealing his car, and he's like, what's going on? And the guy just got out, shot him three times in the heart, and he died on the spot. So my father experienced loss. Later on in life, uh, when we were, you know, just growing up, I can remember one time where um, my dad was out back, and he was, um, we were going to get ready to barbecue, and he was fixing something in the gas tank, and a, the, a match got lit, and they had, there was a hole in the kind of the gas tank or whatever, and it blew up and literally melted the skin off of my father's body. Extraordinary, like crazy things. Go on to my mother. <laughs> my mother grew up as a Jewish, Hebrew-speaking uh, girl. Um, she grew up in a Jewish home, and when she went off to college, she had a radical encounter with Jesus. And when she found Jesus, she knew she found truth. The thing was, her parents didn't know anything about that, and they were very against what was happening. So they had her kidnapped. Uh, she was literally walking one day on campus in the college. The next thing she knew, she was thrown into a van, and she was kidnapped by Jewish rabbis, and she was brought actually here to San Diego, uh, where they decided to do brainwashing sessions and get her to renounce. But she couldn't renounce because she found truth. She found her way out of that situation. Uh, her parents thought, you know, this was during the Jesus movement, and they thought that she was in a cult. And, and so, you know, not knowing what they didn't know, this is 
what they were led to do. Um, instead, she wound up dismissing everything she had heard, marry my father, and um, continued in their Christianity, only to later on actually find themselves in a cult. So, <laughs> oddly enough, <laughs> so I'm just going to give you some hope tonight, okay? Our, our little path can get very wandersome. We can really get off pretty good. Um, you go on kind of to the family. We all moved to Ecuador when I was 12 years old. My sister was 13. My brother was six. My mother was pregnant with my youngest brother when we moved. Um, my sister wound up getting married at a very young age. She was married by the age of 17, had had a child, and her first child, after being a month old, passed away suddenly of sudden infant death syndrome. We know what it's like as a family to lose a child completely unexpectedly. Uh, she wound up marrying um, that man. They had a marriage for about 10 years, and then he completely abandoned her, left her. She felt um, she did everything she could for that marriage and found herself in a divorce. Um, you go on to my other, my brother right there in the middle and his wife. Um, we faced all kinds of just, you know, weird diseases and things. His wife, one Christmas morning, didn't know she had a tumor, um, stood up to get ready for Christmas and fell to the floor. And she almost died that day on Christmas Day. Um, my youngest brother, you'll see on my, so my left, you're right. All right, there we go. Uh, my youngest brother at the age of 18 left Ecuador, came here to the U.S. to go to a leadership school. Um, but unbeknownst to all of us, they were using some very unusual tactics in this leadership school. And um, they decided to work on all these kids mentally and break them down using military tactics. Well, they didn't go there for military. They went there um, to, to be leaders in their Christianity. And um, the, the, the bullying by class, the classmates and then also the oversights in that situation was so extreme that my brother's brain literally shut down. He was in a vegetative state. I was the one called to the rescue. I was here in San Diego, and I'm the one that found him not speaking, not talking, completely glazed over. To say that my family has been through some things is an understatement. <laughs> but God. And I... I wanted us to see the reality of situations because we're all born into a sinful world. We're not born into heaven. We're born into a sinful world where Adam and Eve were the only ones that were born into paradise. They messed it all up for all of humanity. And so all of us, you know, find ourselves, whether we're born into Christian families or non-Christian families, bad stuff happens to good people all the time. It wasn't God's perfect plan, but sin entered the world. And so then there comes a time in our life for all of us, I believe, that we can have a moment of encounter where divine intervention, where human, like books and self-help, they're not going to help us. We need the power of the living God to go through the kind of stuff that I'm talking about tonight. Divine intervention. The Bible says in Isaiah 61, one through four. It says there's good news for the oppressed. That's literally the title in a lot of the Bibles when you look of that particular chapter. It says there is good news for the oppressed. I don't know about you, but what you just saw behind me is some serious oppression. It says the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. Just stop right there. The spirit is the spirit of the Lord on us because I'm telling you, the, the story's about to get real good because when the spirit of the Lord comes on us, that changes everything. It says this, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim the captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. Ever felt like a prisoner in your own body? Ever felt like a prisoner in your own family or to your trauma or to your pain? God says there will be release and prisoners will be freed. He has sent me to tell those who mourn that the time of the Lord's favor has has come, and with it, the day of God's anger against their enemies. To all who mourn in Israel, he will give a crown of beauty for ashes, a joyous blessing instead of mourning, festive praise instead of despair. 
In their righteousness, they will be like great oaks that the Lord has planted for his own glory. They will rebuild the ancient ruins, repairing the cities destroyed long ago. They will revive them. Can somebody say amen? The spirit of the Lord is on me. What happens when the spirit of the Lord is on me? Years and years ago, when, when, when Jesus had come to the earth, he came to the earth and he recognized what, what had happened in this planet and humanity, and he wanted to restore each of us. And so he comes, he gives his life for, for us, he dies and takes back the, the keys of death and despair and trauma, and then he resurrects three days later. And the beauty of this story is that not only does he resurrect and reconcile our salvation, but he wants to bring us life and life in abundance now. It's not just for heaven, it's for earth. And so as he is, is, is ministering to his disciples and, and the world, and then he, he, he begins to tell his disciples, listen, I'm going to go. But as I ascend to heaven, I am going to be sending you a spirit I'm going to be sending you the Holy Spirit. Now, this is unlike anything that the world had ever experienced. Could it be that God with us could change everything? And he said, it's better that I go. It's better that I send because I am sending you the Holy Spirit, the comforter who will be with you always. This is what the Bible says in John 16, 7. But I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go. Now, that's a beautiful concept, but have you ever loved someone and they tell you, yeah, now I'm going to go? You're like, "Uh, no, I love you. What do you mean? And they're like, it's better for you. (laughs) Uh, No, it's not. (laughs) But God isn't, Jesus isn't like us. See, he has perfect care, perfect love, and a perfect plan of faithfulness. He knew what he was saying to us. He's like, I'm not like a human that will leave and forsake you. I'm not like a human that will just go and tell you it's going to be okay. No, I'm going to send the one that's going to make it okay. And he says this in John 16, 7, but I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, the comforter, the advocate, the intercessor, the counselor, the strengthener, the standby will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him. Him who? The Holy Spirit to be with you, to be in close fellowship with you. And this is what I realized, that only the wonder-working power of God coming into our life, maybe we don't understand everything about the Holy Spirit. Maybe we don't get all the things yet, but have we come to a place where we can recognize human tactics don't work? I need divine intervention Let me show you what the picture looks like when divine intervention begins to connect with our world. Can we put up the next photo? How does God take a drug dealer and make him a hope dealer? How does God take someone that is devastated and make them go from poverty to wealth to starting business? How does he make someone go from trauma to pastoring people and to ministering in other nations? How does he do it? The Holy Spirit, divine intervention. My father's heart was healed. He brought that same wonderful talent, gifting, and ability now not to a drug world, but to the people. Everyone he met, he began to tell about the gospel. He had a radical encounter on a beach here in California, and his life was never the same again, completely restored, began to share, went from this nation to Ecuador to become a missionary. He went there, he, you know, experienced all kinds of uh, financial, you know, things, and then, but now he owns businesses, and he gives um, he gives jobs to the people of Ecuador. Like, it's amazing. And then at the same time, opening up churches and, and orphanage and radio station, it, the list goes on. Um, even, you know, I talked about that experience that he had with, you know, uh, the, the, the gas tank blowing up and his skin melting off. And they said, you're going to be scarred forever. My dad doesn't have one scar on his body. In fact, he's so Italian that the hair grew back. They said, you'll never have hair, and you're going to look disfigured. He, he, he doesn't, he looks perfect. You couldn't find. 
find where that had happened in his life. That's what Jesus does. He takes a wreck and he can make something miraculous out of it. You look at my mother and all of the things that she went through. And, and though she was rejected as a child, she was rejected by family and she was rejected by extended family. She was accepted into the house of God. She was accepted into the Christian family. And she has gone on not only to be a wonderful mother to all of us, but like a mother to so many spiritual kids. In fact, my mother just recently, you know, it said before that she went through uh, cancer. And my mother uh, went through a cancer battle of eight years. She had chronic leukemia. At one point, 73% of her cells were compromised. And this is what my mother said. She said, Stacy, that happened to me as a Christian. And I will tell you this, I didn't spend one day in fear. She said, because my anchor was Jesus. And she said, now look, she's a human. She had discouraging days. She's a human. She had discouraging days and she had encouraging days. But she said, the one thing I never had to face was fear because Jesus is my anchor and faith is the evidence of things that are unseen. And she believed that she would be in health and wholeness. And she said, I felt like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that then she faced the fire and she said, and even, she said to God, Lord, I know that you will heal me, but even if you don't, I will have faith until I meet you and I see you. And three weeks ago, we got the report that she is completely and totally cancer-free. <laughs> the report said, we find no sickness in your body. Those were the words on the report. And she had booked a trip for her and my father to Cartagena, Colombia, the beaches there, before she got that report in faith, knowing she would go there to celebrate. And they just came back two days ago after the most massive celebration. So awesome. You move over to, to, to the rest of my family. My sister who had gone through a horrific divorce and all of that, here's the thing. She's remarried to this amazing man. She went on to have four children, but she wasn't just remarried, she was loved. Because when you've been abandoned, and, and you think you've lost everything, God is the restorer of life. He doesn't just bring you someone so that you can eke by. She was, she was loved and is loved by this man. They have a beautiful marriage today. It's extraordinary. And then my brother and his family, as you know, the, my sister-in-law, they told her she was going to die that day. She did not. Um, they've gone on to have beautiful kids. He was, they were missionaries in Italy for a season. They just got back to Ecuador just a bit ago and are doing ministry and business there. My youngest brother over there um, on the end uh, who went through um, a, uh, a, a trauma with a mental breakdown um, from, from being bullied so badly. Um, and it's amazing because when we face that trauma as, as a family, my um, dad said that right before it happened, uh, he had had a dream the night before we got the call. And in the dream, he saw that he was going down. He saw my youngest brother, Justin, going through a very, very dark tunnel. And it got blacker and blacker and blacker. But then at the end, there was a light. And he felt, and God said to him, he's going to go through something, but don't worry. He's going to come out the other side. The following day is when we got the call that his brain had shut down. I was in the hospital. I was there. It was weeks. It was one of the most horrendous experiences, but praise the living God. I remember as we prayed, as we bound every devil in hell that was trying to take his life, and I watched demons flee, and I watched as the power of God began to minister to him, and I watched as the lights turned back on again. And I'm so proud to say he's one of the savviest, most genius people in our family. He's like our technology guru. Like if anything happens, we're like, ask Justin. He's the genius. He's going to take care of all of us. He's now married, beautiful kid. That, my friends, is the wonder-working power of God. That's the wonder-working power of God. 
we can post a picture on Instagram and we can show a perfect versions of ourselves. But you, like me, we each have our individual stories. I wasn't unscathed in my family. You know, I went through all kinds of things, so many medical things, so much just in, in my own history. If you were at Cherish, you know that not only was my mother kidnapped, but I was too uh, in my uh, senior year of high school or junior year of high school. So crazy. They actually found out that I went to a boarding school just for those of you, if you didn't hear that cherished message, but I went to a boarding school in my very first semester. I was so pumped, so excited. It was Christian boarding school, and they put in these new um, uh, dorm parents, they, they called them. They just put them in so quick that they didn't do all the background checks, and they turned out all of a sudden the door shut, and I went, oh, something's really wrong, and it was really wrong, and I spent almost an entire semester of absolute craziness only to find out that they were actually certified psychopaths. <laughs> Uh, like legit on paper, and uh, was rescued out of that situation. So divine working power. Can we all say wonder working power? There you go. Wonder working power of God. You know, when I was uh, on that trip in Ecuador and spending time with the family, one of the uh, one of the nights. My um, family, I'm like, oh, what are we going to do, you know, on Friday? And my, one of my brothers, he's like, oh, I've got the whole night planned. We're all going bar hopping. And I'm like, what? You, what? He's like, yeah, I already talked to mom and dad. They're in. And I was like, what? My 72-year-old father, my 68-year-old mother, all of us. And I'm like, and my mom's like, yeah, I'm so excited. She's like, you know how I get when I drink one glass of wine? It's going to get crazy. <laughs> See, when you restore family, you actually don't have to abuse the things of this world. You can enjoy them. And we were able to go out and have the night of our life. And we had so much fun. My parents were up for it. I mean, they were out with us the whole night. Cuenca, Ecuador is a stunning, beautiful place. There's so many people that are visiting there now. And they have so many new cafes and restaurants and bar top, like uh, uh, rooftop bars. Super cool. And so we were going to all these places. And, and one place that we went to was called Madame. And Madame was this really unique bar top restaurant in the downtown of Cuenca. And you could already get a sense of it like as you walked in it was like the whole scenery changed and girls how many of us know that ambiance is important men ambiance is a thing and it means a lot to women now, luckily for my brothers and father and all the guys that were with us uh, there was good food and drinks so they were happy too but we go to this place, and, and we're having so much fun. And then um, there were two guys there, and they were the brothers that owned the Bar Top restaurant. And they happened to be there, and they were chatting with our family. And they said, actually, would you like a tour of the place? We'll just share with you the history and the story. Now, my entire family, our preachers, pastors, ministers, were like, there's a backstory. Tell us everything. We're like, we need to know. And so they start to share with us about this building that they were going to restore. And can you show the photo of just the place that we are at? This is the two brothers. The place was called Madame. Super cool. And so they said the building was built in 1910. And um, a, a woman and a family owned this place for years and years and years and years. But it was this stunning building. And finally, the woman who lived there was a grandmother. She was about to pass away. And she's like, it's time for me to let this place go. So she sells to these two brothers. The one brother is an interior designer. The other brother is a businessman. They're like, let's do this. They were super pumped. So they go ahead and, and they, they buy the place. And they said, you know what we want to do? We want to restore it back to the 1920s, 1930s. We're going to get everything from Europe. They had a vision for this place and they want to restore it to its peak. And so they were like, you know what? We want to, we want to spare no expense. We want to do this right. We want to do it well. And they're showing us all around. And then they said, um, they said, yeah. And then we started to think we need to do a bit of a remodel. Like we want to keep the integrity of the building and show the, you know, the, the historical sense that it has, but we needed to do a little remodeling. And so in their remodeling, they began to break down some walls. And when they broke down a wall, all of a sudden bars of gold start falling out of the wall. Gems, jewels is pouring out of the wall. And they're like, what is happening and then they realized they own the building it was rightfully theirs I say all of that to say that woman that died in that building she could have been the one to find the bars of gold and the gems, but she never made a decision to break down any walls. You see, for all of us, it's time to take some responsibility for our temple, for our house. It's time for us to say, you know what? I'm going to allow the Spirit of God to break down these walls, and I'm telling you, like that building, bars of gold, gems are going to come falling out. Your talent, your gifting your ability, God placed
Christ in you. It's so sad that that woman died without ever discovering the gold on the inside. Could we be the curse breakers? Could we be the ones that break down generational strongholds? Could be the, we be the ones that decide not on my watch? It's time for family restoration. It's time for an encounter with God. And I'm telling you as we do that, the gold that God put on the inside of you will come pouring out. That is the wonder-working power of God. Three points for everybody that's really worried that I don't have anything you can write down. Here you go, really quickly. Number one, can we take responsibility for our life? Those two brothers, they decided we're going to do the remodel. We're going to break down the walls. We can't. We don't choose the families we are born into. We don't choose our pain. We don't choose our journey of trauma. But at some point, at what point, when will each of us, because I'm telling you in my family, every one of us had our moment. In fact, we had many moments. We still do. But in those moments, can we receive of the Holy Spirit? Can we allow, sometimes, you know, we build walls in our own life. The problem with walls, we think it's preserving us, but instead it's keeping everyone and God out and at arm's length. We've got to break down the walls. We've got to surrender. We've got to come into a, a church and a place like this and not just exist and walk in and out, but we've got to build relationships and friendships and we've got to allow people to speak into the blind spots of our world because as they do, they're trying to, to take the gold. They're trying to show you that there is gold in you that's yet to be released. But it's up to us to make the decision. We choose to take responsibility for our life. But if we do, my goodness, the wonder working power of God, you, like me, like my family, we will all have comeback stories. Can we be the ones to be the curse break breaker? Could we be the ones to break the stronghold? You know what a stronghold is? A hold that's strong, so strong we can't do it by ourselves. We need the divine working power of God to break some stuff up in our lives. I don't know about you, but I can't do this life and I don't even want to think about doing life anymore without the Holy Ghost. I can't. I don't want to. I don't even want to just pray in English anymore because I don't know what to say and how to say it sometimes. So instead I invite the Holy Spirit and I begin to speak in languages I do not know or understand. It's the language of heaven. It's a prayer language between us and God. Do I know what's happening? No, but the Bible says that the Holy Spirit will intercede on our, on our behalf. The perfect will of God over our lives. I don't know about you, but my prayers are not perfect. I do the best that I can, but I come to a place sometimes where I'm like, you know what? I don't know how to pray without doubt. I don't know how to pray without fear. But when I step and I let the power of the Holy Spirit come upon me, then I'm not doing the work. I'm free so He can. He can minister in me. He can minister through me. That is the wonder working power of God. Point number two, can we invite and receive the Holy Spirit into our lives? Divine intervention. We can live in the wonder. I love that, that scripture in Job that says, God thunders with his voice wondrously, doing great things which we cannot comprehend. I don't understand how cancer is defeated, but it is. And I get in a room this big, there's people thinking, well, so glad it happened for her and for your mother, and, but what about me? Listen, we gotta, we gotta grow in, in our strength and believe whether it happens or not, God is God. I've come to a place in my life where I'm like, I'm gonna believe in faith for the absolute best, but whatever happens, God is still sitting on that throne. And I will be healed on this side of eternity, or I will be healed on that side of eternity, but I'm gonna believe with every fiber of my being that He is real, that He is what He says that He is, He's who He says that He is, and I'm gonna go down fighting. I'm gonna believe and have faith, regardless of like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Oh, I know that He can do it. But even if he doesn't, yet will I praise my God. The wonder working power of God. My last point, point number three, can we give the wonder away? 
Can we give the wonder, the transformational power of God? Can we give it away to others? Those two brothers, they were so excited to share with us their story. They were so, so excited to give us a tour of the place and tell us the history. Could we be like that book? Could we open up the story of our life and let people journey it out with us? Could we let them find the wonder that we have found? Can we begin to share and express the wonder working power of God and not keep it to ourselves? I don't want anything that God has given to me to die with me. I wanna pass it along. I wanna pass it to others. I want others to know about the wonder working power of the living God. I want them to experience miracles bigger and greater than I've ever experienced in my life. I want them to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Can we give the wonder away? And let me tell you this, the moment you receive of Jesus, it's divine intervention. Your testimony has already been happening through your whole life. And the moment that you have an encounter with the power of God is the moment that you get to step out and give the good news away to somebody else. I was born into, this happened, I'm still walking through, but God, it's up to us to give the wonder away. Can I get everybody to stand to their feet right now? My sister, when I was in Ecuador, she was dragging me everywhere. Tell this story, Stacy preach this, you know, we had, we even had like, she got all the English speaking girls <laughs> that she knew in the city. And to know my sister is like to know Mother Teresa. I'm like, oh, her heart breaks for people. She's like the biggest includer of all time. She has a way about her to minister to rich and poor, old and young, and she wants them all. She's the great gatherer. And she was gathering everyone and she gathered all of these, these girls that speak English. And, and she started doing um, weeks before a course that I had written called Take Your Life Back. And she did that course with the, with the girls there. And that course is just, it's, it's Bible building. It's, it's, it's giving away the wonder. And I arrived there and it was the fifth week of the, of the six week course. And so she said, Stacy, you have to do it. You have to do it live. And you know what the fifth week is? It's deliverance. And I'm like, of course it is. And so I said, you know what, let's do it. But here's the thing. I'm not just gonna minister deliverance. I'm gonna teach it because I'm going away. And I need you to learn it because I need you to learn, all of you, how the wonder works and to give it away and we all can do it. It's not saved up for one person or one pastor or one leader, it's all of us. We all can step into the power of God and give it away. You don't need a 12-step book for that. You step into it and you learn along the way. And so we had that class with all the girls and we sat one girl in the middle with the biggest, comfiest chair. And then we began to pray and we saw the power of the living God. Every one of them delivered. They had words coming to the visions of their future. They had, they, they were sobbing, some of them, at the, at the comfort and the love of the Savior that they felt. And I'm telling you, tonight is a night like that where anything can happen because he's a wonder working God. So I want you right now just to close your eyes. I'm gonna read these scriptures over you and then I want any of us that are like, you know what? It's time for a power encounter. It is time for divine intervention. It's time for family restoration. It's time for, for me to receive of the Holy Spirit. And I'm gonna ask you to make your way to the altar and we're gonna pray together because I can't talk about the Holy Spirit and not see him move. I don't know how to minister without him and I, I want you to experience what I experienced, but that is up to you and that will be your choice. Psalm 77, 14 says, you are the awesome God who works powerful wonders. You have demonstrated your power among the people. Isaiah 25, 1, oh Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you, I will praise you. I will give thanks to your name for you have done miraculous things, plans formed long, long ago, fulfilled with perfect faithfulness. Psalm 86, 10, for you are great and you do wondrous deeds. You alone are God. We are not. He is. And in Psalm 118.23, it says, this is the Lord's doing. 
It is marvelous in his eyes. He is the wonder working God. So I wanna ask you right now, just to make your way out of your seats, come to the altar if it's time for some divine intervention, if it's time for the wonder working power of God to begin to minister deep on the inside of you, wherever you are at, just make your way out to the aisles. Come on, you know, we, we get too sanitized sometimes in America. Everything happened to be this way and that way. Could we just believe and then see the miracle? That's what God says. He says that miracle signs and wonders follow those who believe. He doesn't say miracle signs and wonders happen and then they believe. He says they believe and miracle signs and wonders follow. Just make your way out. I feel so strongly miracles in this, in this place. It's time for families to be restored back to God. Who's the one? that you've been believing for and you're like, it's too gone. They've done too many drugs. Look at my father on his 18th birthday. He was convicted, but you know what happened after that co the conviction? The judge had a, had a heart moment. And he looked at my dad and said, you have no rap sheet, you're 18 years old and I wanna give you an opportunity. Nothing is gonna go onto your record, but you choose. Either you go to college or you go to juvie. It's a very easy decision for him. I'll go to college. His slate was wiped clean. There was no record. He didn't have to worry. He had to, and I don't know your situation. I don't know what convictions have been there. But God is the great miracle worker. He can do what humans can't do. He can soften the hearts of a judge. He can release and set captives free. He did it to my father. He can do it to anyone. You're believing for health in your body. Come on, let's believe again. Let's believe again. And really quickly as we're, as we're closing and we're about to pray and sing, if you haven't received Jesus for the first time or, or in your life it has grown cold, you're like, you know what, Stacey, it's been a long time since I've really placed and I've let the walls of my heart be broken down by Jesus himself. If that's you in this place, would you just raise your hand real quick? Because we're gonna pray for you because the only way to experience the divine working power of God is to first meet Jesus. And so if that's you, I see that hand, I see that hand, I see that hand. Awesome, I see that hand, beautiful. Eternity reconciled. This is the place of new beginnings. And I love what Pastor Jesse said at the beginning when he did communion. I just had this thought, he said, you know, that first miracle that Jesus did, turning water into wine, he used a water basin that was filthy. It's what was used for people to clean themselves. But Jesus knew we could never clean ourselves. He knew that we couldn't do it, so he stepped in and his very first miracle was to take the dirty and the old and not just transform it, but to make something new. And he brought the best wine from dirty water basin. Some of us have stepped into sin, consciously or unconsciously, known and just happened to find ourselves there. Right now, let's let it go. Let's ask for forgiveness because God's gonna wash us clean and we're gonna step into miraculous working power of God. Everyone just close your eyes and especially for those that have made a decision tonight to receive of Jesus right now, let's all repeat together. God, come on, let me hear you. God, I thank you for sending your son Jesus, to die on the cross for my sins. I thank you, Jesus, for resurrecting with resurrection power, for miracles, to do wonderful, wondrous things. And I thank you, Jesus, for sending me the Holy Spirit. I receive the Holy Spirit life and life in abundance. In your name we pray. Can I get a big amen? Heaven is cheering. So amazing. Just keep your hands lifted to heaven. Come on, let's let the power of the living God begin to minister to our lives. Close your eyes and begin to picture what is it? What do you need to face or what wall needs to be broken down to allow the Holy Spirit to come in with power and begin to shift and change and miracle begin to happen. Oh God, oh God, right now in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you are the great releaser of your power. Oh God, that when you resurrected, oh God, as resurrection power flowed through your blood, we receive of that power tonight, oh God, knowing that all things are possible in you, oh God. And Lord, we thank you right now. We bind and we break every curse that has been operating over people 
can tell it to go. Come on right now. Begin to stir yourself up in the spirit of the living God. Fear, we command you to leave. In the name of Jesus, you leave these people alone. We bind and we break shame right now. Oh God, you are perfect so that we don't have to be. So Lord, we leave it at your cross, oh God. We leave the pain. We leave the trauma. We leave the things that happen to us at your feet. And we thank you, oh God, that we are being resurrected. Lord, I thank you that you are the God that ministers to the grieving heart. Lord, those areas of pain and hurt, oh God, the things that have happened to us, Father. Lord, I pray right now divine intervention divine intervention. Meet us, oh God. Thank you, Jesus, for releasing your power. Thank you for releasing your anointing, God. You're the great comforter. You comfort us in our pain and you release us from the power over it. Grief has an expiration date. It doesn't have to stay with us forever. We release it in the name of Jesus. And we break every generational stronghold right now. The things that our parents and our grandparents struggled with that has come to us, we break it off in the name. Begin to pick what is that thing that's been messing with your family? What is that thing that's been messing with your life? No more. It doesn't have to be that way. you got a new story. You're the overcomer. There is victory in the past of the name of Jesus. Come on, let it go today. We bind and we break every generational stronghold that is not of God. We break it off right now in the name of Jesus. A new story being written. It's not even a new chapter. It's a new story. And some of you need to know that. You need to know it tonight. This isn't just flip the page and it's a new chapter and I got to strive. Oh, you know what's so freeing is that when we come to Jesus and miracle working power comes on the inside of us, it's not just a new page and a new chapter. It's a whole new story. It's a whole new book that's being written. It's new wine. Oh God, I thank you that when we ask forgiveness of our sins, you remember them no more. And you give us, oh God, miracle working power to live out all of our days oh God. Lord, I pray blessing. I pray favor on everyone tonight, God. I thank you that you are a miracle working God. I thank you, oh God, that you're a wonder working God. Lord, I thank you right now. Come on, let's give a clap and a praise in the name of Jesus. Wow, what an amazing word. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Hey, listen, For more information about our church, go to www.awakenchurch.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already and download our app. It is amazing. It is chock full of incredible messages, information about upcoming events, and you can even support our ministry if you feel so inclined. We loved having you with us today. We look forward to seeing you again. God bless you. Live a life that is transformative. Bye for now.